Good day. We're going to continue our discussion with lessons 11 to 15. For lesson 11, the topic is about understanding nursing research frameworks. So to give you the learning outcome, we have theory, model, concept, and framework serves distinct purposes in nursing research inquiries. We also have assessing applicability, ensures theories and models are relevant and usable across diverse nursing scenarios. And consistency focuses on the integrity and coherence of frameworks within the context of nursing research. So when we talk about the foundations of inquiry about framework theories and concept or even models, no? this establishes a systematic approach for addressing complex nursing research phenomena effectively. And conceptual frameworks guide the evaluation process, enhancing clarity and insights in healthcare investigations. Another thing is that when you try to utilize these tools, it fosters innovation, contributing to the evidence-based practice and improving patient outcome. So where can we see framework in our research and what particular chapter? This can be seen in the theoretical foundation or theoretical background of the study. There is a theoretical schema in which you're going to present. It could be a model which is being anchored to your study. So when you look into the diagram of the framework that is being presented in theoretical background, you will be able to identify in there the different variables as part of your study. You have you need to have as, as well the profile who will be um, answering your questionnaire and uh, those variables as well. The dimensions of your variables are also being considered. We also have the different theories as in part of the undergrad is that we try to validate theories that are being anchored in your studies. No, So that's also part of the framework. And at the same time, of course, the respondents and who are the recipients of, of the research. So when we talk about theory, it consists of a set of interconnected propositions explaining a phenomena, enhancing nursing knowledge foundations. And uh, talking about knowledge models, models serves as a simplifi simplified representations of complex realities, streamlining understanding essential for practical application. And in terms of concept, it's a abstract, no? It's an abstract idea representing general notions in nursing, guiding research and theoretical development. So um, if you will not be able to identify certain theories that will be anchored into your study, you can use models that are being represented, no? In which we could also test models as part of your study. And when you talk about the concept, what is it really about, no? So it's the idea behind the theory and even the model as to what it shows or what it signifies based on the representation. So what are the roles of theories no, in nursing research? So theories provide a structured approach for formulating relevant research questions that address specific nursing concerns. So that is why in your book, before you proceed with the uh, statement of the problem, you have to have a conceptual framework for your theoretical background. So once you establish already the theory, that's a time that it would somehow give you an idea on how to structure and formulate your research questions. And it also generates hypotheses. Influential theories inform hypotheses shaping systematic inquiry that tests relationship and improves care practices, especially if you are working with two different variables and you would like to test the relationship of the two or the difference of the two you will be able to come up with certain hypotheses. You also have your um, example guidelines. So say for instance, RM self-care theory emphasizes patient autonomy, guiding research towards enhancing self-management strategies. So that's just a very good example. So what are the roles of models in nursing research? Models distill intricate processes into manageable components, facilitating clarity and understanding in nursing research. Effective models also serve as common language among practitioners, promoting collaborative discussions about complex healthcare issues. A very good example is ORM's model, which exemplifies how nursing frameworks guide practices aimed at promoting patient self-management effectively. Models are also composed of concepts, no? and at the same time, although there are no major assumptions compared to theories, models would somehow provide an idea 
which is a process that somehow has different components to give us a clear definition of what the concept is all about and helping us to understand what really is it all about in terms of our research. For the concepts as foundation, we have precise conceptual definition underpins theories, ensuring cohesive understanding and application in nursing research inquiry. At the same time, accurate definitions enables researchers to articulate variables clearly, minimizing ambiguity and promoting insightful analysis, and well-defined concept bolsters theoretical framework, enhancing their validity and visibility in addressing healthcare challenges. So we also have theoretical frameworks, which are established theories. No? So usually in nursing, we anchor our study with one theory per variable or perhaps one theory for two variables. It depends if it would somehow encompass everything. Conceptual frameworks are tailored to unique research contexts and its application of frameworks such as Benner's novice to expert model aids understanding of nursing competency progression and selecting the appropriate framework enhances research rigor and relevance shaping inquiry into healthcare complexities effectively at the end of the chapter you will be able to um, conclude if the theories are proven and was well established in terms of your research or if these theories are being considered as uh, if these theories are not able to come up with a very good discussion or come up with a very good um, outcome in terms of your research. You know? So that's part of the conclusion part or even in the summary part of your book. So steps in theory development, we have developing nursing theories, which involves problem identification, the literature review, conceptualization, and um, iterative refinement for effectiveness. In theory development, integrating diverse concepts strengthens coherence and relevance in addressing multifaceted healthcare issues. And crafting models require operationalizing principles into structured representations, fostering clarity and applicability in nursing practice. So, evaluating theories and models in terms of external validity ensures theories and models are applicable in real world nursing contexts effectively so that is why when we are trying to identify certain theories and models we have to make sure that these theories and models are somehow relevant based on your variables of the study and also assessing internal consistency enhances theoretical coherence ensuring framework which produce reliable insights across studies. And um, thorough evaluation of theories safeguards the integrity of research findings, promoting trust and credibility in evidence. So applying theories and model in nursing research. So say, for example, in the case of um, Patricia Benner's model, which showcased improved mentorship outcomes in developing novice nurses' competencies effectively. And we also have practical applications. So say, for example, Martha Rogers' model, which demonstrates its effectiveness in managing patient-centric care during transitions. And also integrating nursing theories into practice fosters evidence-based decision-making, enhancing patient care quality and outcomes. So there are common challenges and one of the common barriers would include the resistance to change. We also have inadequate training in utilizing the theories and model and lack of awareness among nursing professionals. And many theories may not address specific cultural or contextual nuances within diverse healthcare environments effectively. And utilizing interdisciplinary collaboration and ongoing education can enhance theory or model integration in nursing research practice. So it's very important that there will be lots of studies who would be utilizing certain theories so that we will be able to consider what are the pros and cons, no? Its advantages, disadvantages, strengths, and weaknesses of the theory and model that is being anchored into the study, because that can be identified in chapter three. So innovations in holistic and integrative process approaches signals a shift towards more comprehensive nursing theoretical models. And we also anticipate advancement, including adaptive framework that facilitate real-time responsiveness to evolving healthcare dynamics and where emerging theories may revolutionize methodologies, fostering interdisciplinary approaches and enhancing collaboration in research. And we talk about methodologies. This is 
the process and the procedures no, that we are doing in the hospital, if these theories and models may be applied as to our practice, no, the interdisciplinary approach that we are um, able to provide for our patient, from other healthcare workers or other health healthcare team members, no, would somehow foster great communication and collaboration. So to conclude, ongoing learning empowers nursing professionals to adapt adeptly apply evolving theories, models, and frameworks effectively, and incorporating contemporary insights ensures nursing research remains relevant, dynamic, and responsive to healthcare advancement, and continuous application of theoretical framework fosters a culture of evidence-based practice enhancing patient care outcomes. So lesson number 12 is defining terms in nursing research. So learning outcome would include Mastering create master creating um, clear definitions critical for establishing foundational understanding in research, and the course delineates various definition types crucial for articulating concepts across diverse research contexts, and practical examples will be provided to enhance comprehension of applying operational definitions effectively. So the lesson underscores defining terminology's role in nursing research for enhancing clarity and comprehension. Precise definition fosters a clear communication among researchers, facilitating collaborative efforts and methodological rigor. And accurate terminological definitions are essential for reliable data interpretation, ultimately improving research outcomes and validity. It's very important that we can identify certain terminologies in our book or in our thesis book, no? It's one way for us to understand by providing its definition and how it is being used in the study. So a clear definition of terms ensures the concept are consistently understood with the nursing research context. And with that clear definition, it is a vital for maintaining clarity, reducing ambiguity, and enhancing comprehensibility among nursing studies. And of course, the precise terminology mitigates misinterpretation. So this allows the researcher to communicate findings effectively across disciplines. So if that particular term is being used all throughout your manuscript, you have to be consistent in utilizing those terms, no? Operation, opera, operationalizing the way that you discuss those concepts or those terminologies all throughout the manuscript. So conceptual definition provides theoretical meaning of term reflecting the underlying concepts of interest in research. And we also have operational definition, specify how concepts are measured or identified in practical observable ways during studies. And conceptual definition focus on theoretical constructs, while operational definition emphasize measurable criteria for the assessment. So the role of conceptual definition. So Conceptual definition establish a foundation outlining theoretical frameworks for understanding complex nursing phenomena or what is going on no? or what is done right now. So we do have an example, say for example with pain. So defining pain conceptually encompasses biological, psychological, and social dimensions vital in the patient assessment. And when we talk about enhancing research validity, robust conceptual definition enhance the validity of nursing research by ensuring consistent interpretation across the study. So in terms of the example, say for example with pain, you have to define what pain is all about based on how it is being used in your study because pain might have a lot of definition based on different books however you have to make sure that you have to tailor fit it with your study operational definitions translate theoretical construct into measurable variables which is crucial for empirical investigation and validation then in nursing research operational definitions Clarify measurement techniques, ensuring data collection aligns with study objectives. And say, for example, talking about patient satisfaction, defining patient satisfaction operationally might involve standardized survey to quant quantify experiences and outcomes effectively. So that's a very good example. You, know, you are going to fit it based into your study. You can see the definition of terms and also the terms that needs to be defined in your chapter one. Usually what we what we are going to do to define is basically the variables of the study, the sub-dimensions no, of the 
of the variables if there are. We also have to consider if you are considering the demographic profile in terms of your questionnaire, no? You also have to define that operationally, no? So you have to operationalize. So begin by clearly identifying and articulating, articulating the core concept that requires operational definition and establish specific measurable indicators that effectively represents the core concept in practical terms and prioritize clarity and precision throughout the process to avoid ambiguity and enable reliable research outcomes. So effective definition ensures clarity, consistency, and relevance to enhance the overall quality of the research because this will give a big picture as to what the term is all about. No? And consistency across definitions aids in maintaining coherence among studies vital for cumulative knowledge advancement. And accurate definitions prevents misinterpretation, ensuring that researchers convey their findings with confidence and also with integrity. So examples of good definitions. So in analysis, a well-defined term improved communication regarding interventions, demonstrating clear stakeholders understanding the involvement. So say, for example, in a case study, you're going to define nursing intervention. So how does nursing intervention or interventions no, being utilized in the study? So you're going to look into the observa your observations, your um, evidences that somehow being done in the hospital or in school. And at the same time, it includes as well with the conceptual aspect. No? So you're going to incorporate as well some definitions found in the book. However, you're going to fit it based on your study. So another example is the chronic pain management. So research on chronic pain management utilize precise definition no? in enhancing treatment, effectiveness, and patient outcome significantly. So usually, pain is being related into its effectivity of enhancing treatment. And at the same time, the outcome of the patients who are recipients in providing these treatments. No? We also have comparative analysis. Examining BARI studies reveal that effective terminology directly correlates with robust research conclusion and applicability. So common challenges, ambiguity and vagueness in definition can hinder effective research impeding collaboration and clarity among scholars. No? So if you're going to define it very uh, in a general manner and it's not specific, that's one of the common challenge. At the same time, um, there is an ambiguity. No, Implement standardized terminologies and framework to ensure uniform understanding across various research disciplines. Sometimes what we define is not, is not how our study is all about. No, We are out of the context and uh, this will somehow give um confusion to the readers who would who have interest in reading your output or your book and clear communication strategies encourage ongoing dialogue among researchers to find to refine definitions increase mutual comprehension and accuracy in the studies so its importance one one thing for sure is enhancing research quality you know so there is a clear definition which improves research quality by providing a solid foundation for accurate replicable findings and uh, facilitating replication studies. Precise terminologies is essential for enabling replication studies, which is being validated and enhance its reliability of research result. And also strengthening the validity, the robust definition strengthen research validity, ensuring that the implication of findings are sound and credible. And to conclude, ongoing emphasis on uh, Clear definitions cultivates an environment fostering precision in nursing research endeavor, and clarified terminologies create conducive conditions for collaborative efforts, enhancing interdisciplinary interaction and breakthroughs. And uh, precise definitions safeguard integrity, allowing researchers to uphold accuracy throughout their investigative processes. So let's go to lesson 13, understanding assumptions in nursing. So just to give the learning outcomes, the assumptions of foundational beliefs of premises that inform research design and interpretation in nursing, explicit assumptions are openly stated while implicit ones remains unacknowledged but influence uh, research outcomes. And recognizing assumptions is crucial for minimizing bias, enhancing rigor, and ensuring reliable nursing research results. 
So exploring assumptions, which enables researchers to critically assess their influence on the study design and outcome. And when you talk about assumptions, directly affect internal and external validity, ultimately determining the credibility of research findings. And identifying assumptions helps in mitigating biases, thereby enhancing the reliability and practical applicability of the result. So these are, if we are going to make a research as a researcher, we need to have an assumption. These assumptions are certain questions or what's really going on in our mind that we would like to know, we would like to search, and we would like to find the answer of the, of the problem. No? So there might be some assumptions that can be proven right, and there can be some assumptions that can be proven wrong. No? So assumptions serve as a foundational belief that underpin study and inquiries and shape research frameworks significantly. Explicit assumptions directly influence the formulation of research questions guiding theoretical and methodological approach. And the identification of assumptions is crucial for structuring effective research designs that yield to credible results as well. So what are the roles no, of assumptions? So assumptions guide research focus, affecting selection of methodologies and interpretation of findings significantly. So if you already have your statement of the problem, you will be able to advance with your methodology. In order for us to address the gap of these assumptions, certain methods are being done in order for us to make sure that these assumptions are well proven right or wrong. No? So in your methodology, Part of which are your data gathering. You also have your the type of study of your research. You also have the statistical treatment data, the environment, the instrument. You no, know, you also have the ethical considerations if there are. You no, know, that's also part of which. Often assumptions include beliefs regarding patient behavior, treatment efficacy, and demographic impact on health outcomes. And this shapes how researchers analyze results, potentially skewing. Conclusions drawn from the data gathered. So explicit assumptions are clearly articulated beliefs no, and recognized by researchers impacting study design and analyses. And assumptions facilitate transparency, which we enable critical appraisal and fostering integrity within the research process. And this implicit um, unchallenged belief that unconsciously shape researchers' perspective, often distorting research interpretation. Sometimes it can be considered as new ones. However, it's best for us still to have some assumption because one way or another, it gives a clear idea based on our beliefs, no? based on what we, we really think of. And uh, based on what we think of, we re then realize and able to recognize that what we are doing in research can somehow also impact of your study, no? And we also have characteristics of explicit assumption. Explicit assumptions are articulated, measurable, and directly influence methodologies ensuring clarity in research objectives. And clearly stating explicit assumptions enhances the reproducibility of studies, fostering great trustworthiness in nursing research. And uh, examples include belief about patients' adherence to treatment regimen, or standardized protocol affecting health outcomes. That's an example, no? So implicit assumption represents unacknowledged beliefs that inadvertently advertently shape research interpretation, often leading to biased conclusion. And another thing is that detecting implicit assumption is complex and they require awareness of deeply held beliefs within researchers' frameworks. And an example includes biases regarding caregiving roles that may influence study outcomes without conscious acknowledgement. So there are also techniques for identification. And we have to utilize frameworks such as critical reflection and peer review aids to uncover both assumption types. And in terms of transparency, formulating assumption enhanced discourse, promoting collaborative scrutiny, and elevating research integrity. And also with clear communication of assumption fosters mutual understanding among researchers, stakeholders, and participants all throughout the study. And how do we evaluate assumptions? We evaluate assumptions which requires pro proper assessment in terms of its relevance, consistency, empirical support, observations, no, or um, experiences, and even logical coherence within the research framework. We also have the consistency of assumption, no, na, 
consistency assum um, consistent assumptions are imperative as they ensure coherence across methodologies and enhances the reproducibility, reproducibility significantly. And strong logical coherence among assumptions fosters valid interpretation, thereby um, supporting robust conclusion in nursing research outcome. So what is its impact? Ignoring assumptions can lead to flawed research designs and severely compromising the integrity of the study outcome. And also in nursing study on patient compliance illustrate how mi misinterpreted assumptions altered expected health outcomes result if we also would neglect this one. And assumptions that remain unexamined may restrict the generalizability of findings across diverse population and settings. So what are the challenges? Common pitfall includes bias from an examined assumption leading to invalid conclusion and reliable findings. No? Um, we can have interpretations based on the assumptions as part of your chapter three, part of which is in the conclusion part, no? which employs also techniques like triangulation and stakeholder engagement to address and reassess underlying assumptions continually. And integrating systematic review and reflective practices strengthens the methodological rigor of nursing research significantly. And to conclude, critically examining assumption is vital for uncovering biases that could skew nursing research outcomes significantly. Robust research requires the continuous evaluation of underlying assumption to ensure validity and reliability consistently. And addressing assumption aims in maintaining integrity, promoting trust, and finding some of practitioners and stakeholders alike. Okay, let's proceed to lesson 14, which is understanding hypotheses in nursing. So when you talk about the hypothesis, this is a testable prediction that guides research by providing clear operational definition. And two main types, you have your null, which indicates no effect, while alternative hypotheses suggest potential effect or relationship. We usually have null hypothesis if, if we want to look into the significant relationship of the study. Students will learn to formulate, evaluate, and apply hypotheses in their own nursing research effectively. I believe that this is part of your statement of the problem in your chapter one. So hypotheses provide a structured uh, framework that facilitates nursing research, real focus inquiry, and evidence gathering. And understanding hypotheses is crucial for translating research finding into clinical practice, improving patient care outcome. And when you try to formulate your hypotheses, this enhances critical thinking skills, enabling nurses to systematically approach complex clinical problems. So in nursing research, a hypothesis is really specific. It's testable with your statistical treatment of data predicting relationships between two variables. And hypotheses um, establish foundational premises you know, that direct research inquiries toward uncovering evidences and insights. And by guiding the research design, hypotheses ensures coherence and relevance in investigating nursing phenomena. So hypotheses serves as a directional tool outlining objectives and variables in nursing studies, which ensures relevance. And say, for instance, testing the impact of nurse-led intervention on patient recovery times illustrate hypothesis utility. No? Would there be an impact of nurse intervention towards the recovery of the patient? No, That can be stated into a hypoth hypothetical question. No? Another thing is navigating complexities. No? in which hypotheses assist researcher in uh, navigating intricate clinical questions by delineating specific research goals. So there are types no, of hypotheses that go with the null. When you talk about the null, it states that there is no significant effect or relationship no, between the studied variables. And when you talk, and, we, and in terms of illustrative example of your null, say for instance, with a null, we propose that a new nursing intervention has no impact on the level of satisfaction. Okay, the demographic profile does have any significant relationship with variable number one. Demographic profile does not have any significant relationship with variable number two. Variable number one does not have any significant relationship with variable number two. No, so that's how you place it in your um, book. 
And conversely, the alternative hypothesis posits that a significant effect or relationship exists among the studied variable. So usually an alternative hypothesis can be seen in your um, statement of the problem, no? particularly in the first part of your statement of the problem. Because usually in your null hypothesis, this is on a different end. It's being um, segregated. However, with your alternative hypothesis, it's already part of the research question that you're trying to formulate if you are looking into the significance and relationship of the two variables. So the null hypothesis represents a baseline assertion predicting no effect or relationship among variables. Significance in the nursing research establishing a null hypothesis is crucial for statistical testing guiding the researcher's um, evidentiary reasoning. And in nursing, asserting no improvement after interventions allow for objective evaluation of treatment efficacy. So an alternative hypothesis proposed that the relationship exists guiding research towards significant findings within nursing. And essentially, it offers as well a counterpoint for the null hypothesis, enhancing the clarity of research objective. And say, for instance, hypothesizing the specific nurse intervention, which reduced anxiety, can direct focus patient centered studies. So, in terms of formulating hypothesis, a well formulated hypothesis must be clear. No, it should be in one statement only, allowing precise understanding of the research intent. An effective hypothesis should be empirically testable throughout our observational or experimental research methodology. So, you can find your hypothesis in quantitative data or quantitative research. No, and formulating your hypothesis involves identifying your variables, reviewing literature and ensuring relevance and specificity. And how do we evaluate this validity? In terms of the assessment, would involve determining of your hypotheses accurately reflect the phenomena they aim to measure, and reliable focuses on the consistency of measurement, ensuring hypothesis yield stable and repeatable result. Logical consistency hypothesis guards against contradictions, enhancing the credibility and rigor of the research findings. So testing hypotheses in research. So common statistical method like your t-test. You also have your analysis of variance. You also have your MANOVA, your multi-analysis um, analysis of variance. No? So it depends if you have lots of variables. Okay which you try to evaluate the hypothesis, determining significance in nursing research effectively. You also have a regression model, your regression analysis model. You also have your um, chi-square, Pearson R. You know? So these are some of the statistical analysis techniques that can be utilized. And real-world nursing intervention demonstrate how hypothesis testing influence clinic, influences clinical outcome and decision-making processes. And using interviews and focus group discussion for quality research explores hypothesis by capturing nuanced patient experience and even insights. So common challenges. Researchers often face difficulties identifying relevant variables and constructing hypotheses that accurately reflect clinical questions. And by overcoming ambiguity, clearly defined variables and operational definitions can help alleviate confusion surrounding the formulation of hypotheses. And addressing issues of statistical power enhances hypothesis testing reliability, okay? minimizing the risk of type 1 and type 2 error. So this is more into the statistical treatment wherein you're going to consider a p-value of 0 0.05 no? or 5%. So to conclude, systematic scrutiny of hypotheses enriches research validity, ensuring robust inquiry into nursing issues, and testing hypothesis rigorously is essential in verifying results and affirming evidence-based nursing practice. And of course, if the hypothesis is effective in terms of formulation, evaluation, and testing, which are paramount for advancing nursing research and practice. And last lesson is the understanding of quantitative research in nursing. So understanding quantitative research design is a fundamental for conducting rigorous systematic nursing studies impacting practice. And when you talk about quantitative designs, this provides empirical evidences necessary for informed decision-making in patient care and policy. 
And when you master the design, it enhances the validity and reliability of research finding in nursing contexts. So students will be able to grasp critical definition and characteristic underpinning quantitative research design for nursing application. And you also be able to understand diverse quantitative research types, aid students in selecting appropriate methodologies for clinical inquiries. And participants will be able to gain essential skills to critically analyze research, improving their contribution to evidence-based practice. So how do you define a quantitative research? Quantitative research utilizes numerical data to establish patterns and test hypotheses systematically. That is why they, it has principles including objectivity, replicability, and statistical analysis, ensuring solid evidence for practice advancement. Because if you talk about quality, it's more into discussion, observation, interviews. No? But for this one, it's more into the numerical evidence as part of the practice advancement. And uh, the design underpin evidence-based nursing, enhancing care quality for rel reliable data-driven conclusions and intervention. It's because of the numbers that are being treated with statistics and being interpreted in Chapter 2 and conclusion summary and findings for Chapter 3. You also have your focus on numerical data. So when you talk about quantity, it's more into numbers, objectivity, replicability, and statistical analysis for rigorous research robustness. And it emphasizes measurable data and statistical methods while qualitative explores subjective experience and meanings. So in terms of its utilized structured tools for data collection analysis, this ensures consistency and enhancing finding credibility. So what are the types of quantitative research? We have descriptive design. This is one of the common design, especially with you, you know, in your study right now. It's more into descriptive study, which is more into observational method to gather your data, primarily focusing into the um, detailed overview of the phenomena or what's going on. You also have your correlational design, which examines relationship between variables, determining the strength, and uh, also the direction of association without direct manipulation. When you also have your experimental design, which we don't have an experimental design right now in NOR 027, because this involves random assignment to test hypothesized effect of interventions on outcomes, establishing causal inferences. So talking about descriptive research, this collects comprehensive data to depict characteristic of a population or phenomena in nursing. So this research type emphasizes observational analysis, providing foundational context essential for informed nursing practice. And at the same time, a very good example would include patient satisfaction survey and health trend analyses, guiding improvement in healthcare delivery systems. So it's more into the comprehensive data being discussed. And at the same time, um, it also has an observations based on your analysis, based on the findings, no? providing a good context, no? which is part of your study. Correlation now, there are two variables that are being investigated, particularly its relationship between variables crucial for understanding complex interaction in nursing practice. And when you talk about correlational studies, it informs nursing by illustrating some trends, there is an association impacting patient outcome and care strategies. The notable studies include those exploring links between nurse staff, staffing levels, and patient recovery rates in the hospital. So experimental research manipulates variables to observe outcomes, establishing causal relationship critical for nursing intervention. And uh, features include controlled setting, and random assignment and uh, precise measurement, ensuring reliable results in critical environment. And a very good example for experimental studies are randomized controlled trials, evaluating treatment efficacy, enhancing patient care protocols based on evidences. So when we talk about experiment, you are trying to manipulate a variable, providing certain interventions in order for that particular variable to to, to enhance or probably you know, to check if there would be some differences or if there are any changes after providing interventions into it. 
when you talk about quasi-experimental, um, the research lacks random assignment but effectively evaluates intervention in real-world nursing contexts. In this particular design, it allows a comparison of outcomes across groups addressing practical constraint in healthcare setting. A very good example are studies evaluating effects of educational program on patient compliance exemplify quasi-experimental design in research or in nursing. Nursing, rather. Choosing the right research design. So you have to select a design that aligns closely with specific research question and objectives for relevant result. In all of your study, a descriptive design is applicable. But there are also studies in NUR027 that there are two different variables that we would like to look into that is considered as descriptive correlational design. Okay. You consider anticipated outcomes, design must effectively capture design data necessary for answering research inquiries, and use the checklist of criteria including feasibility and ethical considerations when choosing research design. So common method includes survey, experiments, and observational techniques to gather numerical data effectively. So what we're doing right now is we're doing a questionnaire, no? Where a questionnaire which would be given as a survey to the respondent. So that's the mode of data collection that what you'll be doing. And the importance of validity is ensuring validity throughout the research phases, safeguards the integrity of findings and supports reliable conclusion. And in terms of maintaining reliability, this has in, involves no consistent measurement and procedures, enhancing confidence in quantitative research outcome. So understanding Quantitative research design is really vital for fostering advancement in nursing practice and patient care, equipping nursing students with comprehensive research skills, and also enhances evidence-based decision-making and improves health outcome. And continuous exploration of quantitative methodologies will drive innovation and improvement within the nursing profession. So that ends with our lesson. If you have any questions, you can write your questions in the comment section below, and you can even ask me in our GC. So thank you for listening.